Hey everybody, it's me Stella Wild, and I'm here with your weekly Friday Feelings Tarot Energy Forecast for May 18th to May 25th. I'm calling these Friday Feelings just because it's really looking at the emotional energies that you're going to be dealing with the next week. So it is a weekly tarot forecast, but I like kind of having a theme, so I kind of like the Friday Feelings idea. So it is a big full moon in Scorpio on May 18th, and I will put the link in the description if you've not already seen my video horoscope for that um, energy. It's for each uh, sign of the zodiac and where that full moon is falling in your chart. So you might wanna take a look at that before you watch this video or after, doesn't matter, but it might be helpful for you. Uh, as always, these are general readings. I am going to break it out by sign by sign. Usually I take it by the elements because it's just a little faster, but this week I am going to go sign by sign. So watch for your sun, moon, rising, and Venus. And remember, it is general reading, so if you have a personal concern, book a reading with me. I will leave a link in the description. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, I'm so glad that you're back and watching the videos. And I hope that you get a lot out of them. And please do leave me a comment and let me know uh, how the energy is resonating for you. All right, so let's get right into it. So this is our weekly tarot energy forecast. We're really, really diving into the energy of the emotions. That's the key for these Friday feelings the emotions that you can expect, the emotional situations. And of course, as I said, with that full moon energy, emotional energy is gonna be riding very high. <laughs> it's gonna be, you know, Scorpio does nothing by halves. It is full on intense. So, <laughs> Scorpio moon here. So yeah, intense baby, intense. Okay, let's get into it. I'll leave the timestamps in the description. All right, Aries, what's the emotional energy you're going to be dealing with this week coming up? Yeah, I like that one's kind of popping, Aries. I think I'm just going to take three, and then I'm going to pull an angel answer card for everybody. Okay. Yeah, that one's sticking in my hand, and let's see what else. Aries. Let's take that one, too. Okay, so what do we have? Wow, ooh, beautiful, beautiful, wow. Look at this, Aries. So your full moon is in that eighth house of transformation, okay? So look what we have transforming. Your trust and faith in the universe. There is a fresh start for you, Aries, this month anyway. And remember, go watch my monthly tarot videos as well. Um, but that energy was definitely in the ethers, <laughs> in the ethers, for sure. Um, for this month in the monthly tarot reading about a, a fresh way forward. You are alive again, alive again, trusting the universe, feeling very good this week on the heels of this full moon because you are making amazing progress in manifesting your goals, wishes, and dreams. Your personal power is on fire, Aries. You are truly transforming your life in whatever way you choose, but in particular, in doing some very deep healing work. I feel a lot of Aries are reconnecting with their creativity. It's been dormant for a while and you're reconnecting with that. And as a result, there is amazing fresh healing energy that's being brought into your life. And of course the eighth house is ruled by uh, Pluto. It has amazing regenerative qualities and powers. So there can be quite the healing transformation that begins for you at this full moon you see the evidence aries i feel you're seeing the evidence of the mindset work that you have been doing on yourself the way you have been uh working on your manifestations and you're going to see evidence of that and that's going to give you further impetus to continue with your trust in the universe and in doing the healing work on yourself. So that is beautiful. Yeah, I'm liking this one. Okay, Aries, there's something better. Full moons always bring more information to light. So you may find Aries that in some situation in your life this week, um, you're going to be able to let go because it's not aligned with your healing. It's not aligned with what you truly want to manifest. 
So there is something better on the way for you. Beautiful. Okay, let me just reset my cards and now we will do Taurus. So Taurus, you have that big full moon in your seventh house of relationships. So this could be particular, particularly tender time for you with a full moon in the seventh house because the energy of course is opposite yours. So there's a real spotlight on other people and their needs and desires and how do they fit in with your own. So let's see what you're, whoa, that one popped right out. And look what popped right, look what popped right out. The release card, the death card. Okay. All right, and let's see what else. Some Tauruses will, I mentioned this in my, my horoscope. Some Tauruses will be coming to the end of a line in a relationship um, because it's not aligned with who you're becoming. Moving on, look what else came out. And the crown chakra, this is amazing. So Taurus, I know if this situation applies to you, if you are moving on from a friendship, a love relationship, even moving on from a job, I mean, a job is a relationship, um, know that you are being divinely guided. You are getting... Um, you know, downloaded information into your crown chakra as to why and how this doesn't fit in with your scenario anymore and how you want to uh, grow and expand into something that is much more, much more aligned with who you truly are. That is the big issue. I can't stand all this glare on my glasses. I'm so sorry. Um, that is really the key, the key issue, Taurus, is moving on to situations and relationships that are uh, aligned with your spiritual, also your spiritual side, who you're growing into spiritually, who you're becoming, your, your, um, it's really this up leveling I'm feeling because of this crown chakra. Like you are accessing your spiritual information more and more and more, and you're letting your life be guided by it as well. You're trusting in it much more and you're realizing that as a result, these situations are just not aligned with you and they must be let go of. So there is going to be, like I said, but look at all the white healing light that's in this person's heart chakra right here. So this release is going to be a cleansing that's going to take place because your heart's not in it anymore. Moving on, moving on, eight of cups, moving on divinely guided. So whatever is being let go of at this full moon and into next week, um, just know that it is time. It really is time. It is time. Okay, let's pull an angel answer card. Let's see what else we have for you. you. You know, as I say, if you've watched my other videos, as I say with these cards, you know, you can think of a question. We'll see how they and so this could be the answer to your question, or we'll see how the energy plays out. Stick it in my hand. Let's see. Success. So know, like I was saying before, know that whatever you are wrestling with spiritually will have a successful ending. This relationship will have a successful ending in that you've learned the lessons from it. And that is why it's leaving your life because you don't need it in your life anymore. You've learned those lessons. You're moving on. Uh, if this relationship or job scenario doesn't apply to you, uh, just know that some area in your life will experience success in the upcoming week. Okay, beautiful. All right, now let's look at my Geminis. Geminis. Oops. All right. My Geminis, what is going on with you? You have that full moon in your sixth house. Whoa. <laughs> the spirits are very active today. Oh my goodness. <gasps> wow. <laughs> Rebuild. That's what came up. Rebuild. Look at that card is beautiful. Of course, that is the tower. <laughs> That's the tower card. The spirits are very active today. This is the second reading I have filmed today and the cards were just flying, flying all over the place. So, okay. All right, Gemini, let's see what you're rebuilding. 
So you are. I mean, go watch my, my horoscope one. But it's really about rebuilding health and work routines for you. So that's coming to light. I feel like a lot of Geminis are, have already started on that path. I like that one. And, um, you know, you're uh, in doing so, you're avoiding a calamity, I feel. There is something that you are going, like, narrowly escaping some sort of um, problem that could have manifested with your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual health. But you realize that you were kind of going in the wrong direction and you nipped it in the bud. And that's why you're rebuilding. So look at this. Heal and two of cups coming together. So this is beautiful energy. So you're rebuilding. You're rebuilding your, your physical self, your mental self, your emotional self, your spiritual self. You are healing this is the star card. So look, we have a 16, 17. You're going from this to this. Okay, so you're going from a little bit of a warning. There was a warning there. You see how it's down, but it's down here. So you kind of got a little, it's not quite in her butt, but you got a little kick in the butt. <laughs> you know, figuratively speaking from the universe. There was a warning that was delivered to you. And that's why at this, and I feel it probably came around, um, probably around that new moon or the full moon that we had um, back in April. But you took charge, you took charge, and as a result, at this full moon, you're going to see the positive efforts start manifesting of your rebuilding process, because full moons bring things to light, and you're going to see that you're on the right track with your healing. Not only that, but there is the possibility of um, either having some sort of support from uh, your partner in this new healing regimen that you're on. You could be meeting a new person who's interested in the same type of healing and, you know, emotional and physical and spiritual work, you know, who's into self-improvement, something like that. And you could become good friends. You could become lovers. I mean, this is the the Two of Cups card. So this is meeting with like-minded people because, you know, we have two people here um, coming together in nurturing one another's quest to become better people. That's what I really feel from this energy for you. So that's really lovely. Your partner's very proud of you. Okay. They may not be saying it, but they are very proud of you. All right. Let's see. With what you've been doing in your efforts to make yourself better, especially physically. Um, okay. Now let's get into an angel answer card. You can think of a question. We'll also just pull one in relation to that little reading. Let's see what we have. Yeah, I'm liking this one. Okay. Okay. So within the next few months, I think what this is going to show is that within the next few months, you're going to, it's, it's like you're, I'm hearing time warp. It's like light speed. Like you're, you're just like a, I'm, I'm feeling very like Star Wars, like warp speed, like boom, like within the next few months, like where you were at the beginning of the year, you're going to see within the next few months how you're like in another stratosphere. Is that the right terminology? You're in another time zone. You're in another level that your healing and what you're doing for yourself, the work that you're doing on yourself, has going to have such a rapid acceleration of success within the next few months. Really, really nice energy here. Okay, let's also look now for my cancers. Actually, I have to pause and take a sip, take a sip of water. It was divinely directed because I heard it. I was divinely directed to start drinking lemon water. And it's quite refreshing. I've never really been into that. But I must say, it's very nice. Nice organic lemon in there. And just plain water. Nothing else. Okay. You might want to try it. It's good for detox. All right. Let's get into cancers now. Cancers. What is going on for you? You have this full moon in your fifth house. Emotionally, what's going on with my cancers? What is happening? Look at that one sticking out. We're going to take that one. All right. Let's see what else. Cancers. 
following week. Yeah, I'm liking that one. All right, let's see what else. More cancers. Yeah, stick it in my hand. All right. Wow, you got rebuild again too. Gemini just got that. So you have rebuild, you're rebuilding, wheel of fortune, flow, and refusing to see, two of swords. So I feel like there's a situation in your life, Cancer, um, probably involving a child, a creative project, um, a love relationship, a love affair, not necessarily a marriage or stuff you know, stable partnership, but somebody you're dating, perhaps. Um, you've been wanting to make that decision. There's some sort of decision that needs to be made. And with that, with that full moon coming up, at that full moon, decisions usually get made at a full moon because more information comes to light. The emotions are heightened. So, you know, the, the dam bursts, so to speak, and people must take action. So there has been something that you've been kind of not wanting to see about one of those situations in your life that I just mentioned. Um, and in fact, you've been pretty hard headed in your stubborn refusal to see it. <laughs> okay, because this person's wearing a helmet. So this armor, you know, they're a knight, I guess. And they are just not, they're hard headed. They are stubborn, they are not wanting to see it. Yet even on this helmet is a third eye. There is a third eye here. So your intuition has been trying to penetrate that metal helmet, helmet that you have on. And even the crown chakra is lit up and trying to penetrate and get into your thick skull that you must see something about this situation. There is, I just explained this to Gemini, there's something that is warning you. It's right here. It's it's tapping at you. This is not, ex I mean, I call this a kind of a kick in the butt from the universe because it's kind of touching this lady's rear end here a little bit. So it's a little like a warning. There's a little kick in the butt from the universe that um, you got to be careful. Something is perhaps showing its age, showing its cracks, showing where it needs repair. There's a situation that needs to be addressed, that needs to be rebuilt in your life. And the time is right to do it. The 10, the wheel of fortune. But it doesn't come. The answer is not going to come, Cancer, from a hard-headed refusal to look at the truth. The only way the answer is going to come is for you to enter the waters of emotion and go within and go with the flow within and see where your intuition leads you to make the decision. Most cancers make decisions that way anyway, most of the time, because cancer is very intuitive. But um, especially if you have mercury in cancer, you can you can get a little stubborn and hard-headed, just like a mercury in Taurus can. Um, but, you know, that's what needs need some addressing so there's some situation again this is general so you'll know what the situation is as it pertains to you but as i said likely some fifth house matter so a creative project relationship child there could be a child in your life who's really giving you a problem <laughs> you know the growing pains and there's got to be a different approach to dealing with that child the way you've been dealing with him or her has not been effective um, that there's a more organic approach that's what I'm hearing a more organic approach I think you maybe have been dealing with them from a textbook approach and there's a more intuitive organic natural way of dealing with their situation um, that's why for some of you for others of you it's a mindset you're refusing to see beyond some entrenched beliefs that you have about creativity, risk-taking, relationships, light, light relationships, um, things of that nature. So that full moon could give you a little bit of a tiny, you know, boop, kick in the butt about it nothing bad here it's just to adjust and go with the flow 
and the timing is right for that. I just faded out there for a second. Okay. In fact, I'm going to stop the video and make sure everything's okay. Okay, everything's fine with the video. All right, so as I was saying, Cancers, uh, we will now pull an angel answer card for you. You can think of a question. We'll also look at this card in relation to the cards we just pulled out. I have two stuck together. I have a year from now, and I have big happy changes. So whatever you've been wanting to rebuild in your life when it comes to relationships, creativity, children, taking a risk in life, big happy changes are on their way and a year from now. This, this timing, again, a 10, a year from now as well. So very interesting energy for you, Cancer. Okay, now we're going to do my Leo's on with my Leos, my Leos. Okay, so that's in your fourth house of home, that, that big full moon. Family, roots. How are your emotions going to be? Whoa, let's take that one. What is going on for you? That one, and really there we go like either jump at me or stick in my hand or something wow wheel of fortune again we just had that for cancer okay so we have your card is here leo the strength card so there is some situation in which you're either feeling a lack of control uh that you need more strength you need to get in control of uh you almost need to look with a second set of eyes you know, you got to have like eyes in the back of your head, like type of thing. Um, uh, yeah, I'm hearing that really something because we have that Uranus conjunct Venus going on as well. Watch my other video. Um, but there's there could be some really unexpected situation at your home that you do need to have eyes in the back of your head, especially so. Um, this is this is not for everyone and this is not um you know, doom and gloom or anything, but just, just make sure that everything is secure at your home. Okay. Your, everything is secure. Your alarm is on, your doors are locked, your windows are locked. Again, this is not paranoia. This is not, I'm hearing this for some people. Just make sure everything's good in that your personal safety, your home safety, that everything's good with that. You know, leave some lights on, you know, I'm not saying anything's going to happen. I'm just hearing, hearing that for some people. Um, Okay, we have a feeling alone. I talked about how, and this is a Five of Pentacles card, I talked about this in my other video that there could be someone leaving your home, there could be somebody coming back after a long time away. So this feeling of aloneness could be going away for some Leos because as I said, somebody's coming back into your home perhaps after a long travel away, maybe a kid home from school, that type of thing, from like college. Um, so, you may, and look, we have our full moon in this card. Alternatively, some Leos, you're, you are, you're going to be feeling very much like, where did everybody go? <laughs> you're like, you're sitting at home and like the full moon is rising outside your window and, you know. But you have the resources, you have, and you have the strength to um, be on your own. Like you're going to, you're okay. And in fact, this could be a very interesting time of contemplation for you in terms of where do you want your life to go next with this, with this flow here, with the Wheel of Fortune card. Something is in the works. I mean, my monthly video for Leo was, was very, very positive. But, you know, full moons, and of course they're general readings, but full moons can bring up tender emotions, of course. And with a full moon in a fourth house, of home and family and roots. I mean, let's face it, that's a tender area of life anyway. So you could be thinking about, you know, where where do you really want to be in a year from now? While you may be perfectly fine on your own, you have the strength to uh, 
you know, live your life accordingly, you may not want, want to always be on your own. So what direction do you need to move in? I talked about this in my weekly video. What uh, horoscope video? What direction? Look, this is like a compass here on this card pointing in various north, south, east, west, right? What direction do you need to move your life in? I think you're going to be really thinking so very poignantly and strongly about that, Leo, because I think you want to move from this kind of, and I'm speaking in metaphor here, the darkness, because look, it's night to the light. I think some Leos, and I feel like the energy's been shifting You've been coming out of that, uh, have been kind of in this little bit of darkness, kind of hidden away. And Leo, I mean, look at the different energies. This is your card. Like Leos want to be in the sunshine. So I think some of you, this could be an emotional darkness where you've just felt kind of lost. Um, and you're feeling that at this full moon. And you're the way to, you know, cope with that is to really, like I said, envision the direction you want your life to go in. Which way do you want the wheel to turn? So there could be some very important emotional uh, revelation that comes about for you at this full moon about that. And it's going to come, as I was saying to uh, Cancer, it comes from your intuition. There's water here in this card. It comes from your intuition. You can't just sit down and make a pros and cons list. I mean, you can, that might be helpful, but it's really got to be felt in your body, in your spirit, in within you, uh, within your intuition to know which is the right direction for you. Um, and with this strength card too, I would say Leo is, I mean, you really want to get a handle on this. I know some Leos really have been feeling like they've been stuck. They, they, you know, they haven't known, known which way is up, like where they're supposed to be going. Um, but like I said, that energy has shifted. You're, you're coming out of that. Um, and you do, you really want to get a handle on, on your next life direction, really. All right, let's ask, uh, you can ask a question to the angel cards. We'll also pull one and see what's happening for you. I think this full moon, you're going to be really thinking a lot about yourself. <laughs> and I know sometimes Leos get a very bad rap that they're selfish. So I'm not saying it in that sense. I don't know why. I mean, I have always found Leos to be incredibly generous. So I don't know where that Leo selfish thing comes from. Um, but anyway, um, okay, sticking in my hand. And I think we have two here, so we'll take them. Um, so I, and I, so I say that, like, I think you're going to be very much focused on yourself because this card you're representing, you came up and again, not in a selfish way, but in a way of really, what are your needs? What are your needs for some very important life areas of you know, where you live and what career and direction you want to go in. So this is a great time for introspection. Okay, there's something better and within the next few weeks. So like I said, Leos, you're really definitely, you know, you're coming out of a slump for sure. And um, many of you are already feeling the reinvigorated energy flowing. I think you'll have a clearer sense of direction within the next few weeks because you are coming to terms with the fact that you've kind of been dimming your light. There is something better for you. Okay. All right. Now my Virgos, what are going, is going on for my Virgos? I need another, that's when I talk so much, I need water. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right, Virgos. What is going on for you? Let's see. I keep an eye on my time too. Okay, Virgos. What is happening? How are you feeling at this? All these are sticking in my hand. No, that's too many. Okay, Virgos. How are you feeling emotionally at this full moon that's in your third house? Okay, that one. 
God, they're all falling. I'm telling you, they're like crazy today, these cards. They're all like, they're very, lots of energy. Lots of energy in these cards today. All right, and that one. Let's see. Okay, so we have the um, sacral chakra about your creativity. And your full moon is in your third house. And the third house is traditionally ruled by Gemini. So it has the flavor of writing and creativity and communications and networking, all those very Gemini things. So it's about also your money. And look what we have. We have this beautiful judgment card blossoming. And we have the bluebirds of happiness. Your card, the Hermit, Virgo, is here. So Virgo, you're really opening yourself up to letting greater happiness into your life through the blossoming of your creative talents. That's that's really it in a nutshell. <laughs> and um, I feel, and I said this in my weekly, some of you, the seeking is going to be internal. Yes, you know, Om, you're going to have that, but... Some of you are also going to be actually on literal physical journeys. You will be traveling, doing some short trips. Um, in regards to this talent blossoming, there is some beautiful golden egg of happiness. This could be financial since we have the sacral card. This can also just be creativity, creative project. But um, you're going to see evidence of this at the full moon and the week after. You're going to be really feeling the um you're gonna um, i know that's what i'm hearing i'm hearing you're gonna feel like the goose that laid the golden egg and i think you're also going to get a very inspired um creative idea of how you can grow this talent or business that you're involved in because the other thing that's important here on this card is this vine so it's like to me, it's like a jack in the beanstalk. I know it's kind of coming off the tail of this situation here, but um, this this really is is something I think also quite magical that you're birthing into existence, and it uh, has the potential to be, as I said, quite lucrative and um, sustain you for a long time because it's. It's like soul. I'm hearing it's like soul food for you as well. I mean, you're happy about the material gain, but there's also an aspect of it nurturing your, you know, because you're showing up here as the hermit. I mean, nurturing your inner world as well. This blossoming that's happening. Okay, let's see. All right, so you can ask a question, Virgo, and we'll pull a card. We'll also look at the card in relation to the reading. This is beautiful, just beautiful cards. There's not, I mean, I can't elaborate too much on that because I mean, that is like, like, <laughs> like spot on. It's just so succinct and clear. Okay, sticking in my hand. Trust. That's your answer. I think I think some of you are a little suspicious. They're a little kind of like, really? Is it this is because I mean Virgos are natural skeptics anyway, ruled by Mercury. Of course, you're gonna be a little skeptical, and that's fine. But you're kind of like, is this too good to be true? Are these things really happening to me? You know? So trust trust also in your abilities virgo you got this like whatever this thing is that you're doing you're growing you're blossoming into whatever this talent or business is whatever it is trust that you have it in you to turn it into something incredible okay i'm going to pause the video before i do libra Okay, Libra. Oh my gosh, I was like shuffling and that popped over, but I'm not gonna take it. All right, let's see what's going on for you. So you have this full moon in your second house of money and self-worth. Let's see what's going on for you. 
like I said, please watch my other horoscope video. That'll also give you more information on this full moon. So we're looking at the emotional energies. All right, I'm waiting for one to, let's take that one. Kind of pop out. That one's like yelling at me. Okay, let's, and that one's like coming out. All right, let's see what we have here. <laughs> wow, this is really beautiful. Okay, so we have the crown chakra. This has been coming up for a couple signs. And we have two wand cards. We have the ace of wands, the new vitality. And we have the three of wands taking the lead. So there will be some digital downloads, you know, crown chakra coming through. So, you know, what I call digital downloads. Uh, that you're going to be getting from the universe Libra probably about some sort of money-making ideas probably some sort of way uh, some sort of uh, kind of uh, self-esteem personal affirmation kind of boost you're gonna feel which is ties into this new vitality uh, about a positive new direction in your life I feel many Libras are uh, possibly going to be getting some sort of uh, new jobs at this full moon very very possible and um, this this new situation is not like your other other jobs this could even be a new client um, a new business project but it's it's there's something about it I feel is going even though I don't have pentacles here I'm just here I'm feeling and hearing this this intuitively is that for a lot of Libras, it's going to boost your self-esteem, that there has been, um, you've been feeling maybe like a little in need of some validation, and hey, we all need that, right? So hey, hit the like button, I need some validation. <laughs> um, and I feel like this new opportunity that's coming in is going to uh, give you that validation, you know, and, um, There's also going to be some inspired messages you're going to receive about your money, perhaps where to invest it, perhaps where to cut corners on it in your budget so that you'll have more money. Um, whatever you're doing in regards to your money is going to have a, a, a reju I'm hearing the word rejuvenating, a rejuvenating effect on your finances. So, for some, as I said, with the one, the Ace of Wands, there's a new job, a new opportunity coming in. Perhaps there's an opportunity for overtime. Uh, this could be some side work that you're doing that really starts to take off now. Also, you're going to be given an opportunity to uh, step up and into a leadership role at your place of employment. If you, I feel like this is if you're already employed. If you're looking for a job and you get the job, that's not going to happen right away. Sorry. It might happen in three months. But um, if you're already employed, what's going to happen, I feel, around this full moon, you could hear news of an opportunity that you have a new project, a new assignment, a new client, a new responsibility that revitalizes you, that you've been feeling a little burnt out from your job, but this new thing coming in is going to make you feel much better. And it's one that is visible, like you have a leadership role in it and people are going to be watching you. I mean, in a good way that you were given that assignment because they know and believe in you. And that's why I'm saying like there's a self-esteem component I feel to this full moon for you as well. Okay, let's pull a angel card and see so you can think of a question and see what the answer is. We will also look at the card in relation to the reading we just did. Okay. It's up to you. It's up to you, Libra. There are some new opportunities and things that will be coming to you over this week. Well, I'm filming this. Actually, I'm filming this early because <laughs> it's been taking me a while to get my videos processed. So I'm filming this on Tuesday. So it's, it's even going to happen, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, like this whole 
the next 10 days from when I'm filming this and into the end of the month that these opportunities and new situations and possibilities are going to be coming in. And it's really up to you to be aware with that crown chakra, like be aware and open to the good things that want to come in. And because sometimes, sometimes opportunities are presented in, well, sometimes opportunities are presented in adversity and sometimes opportunities are presented in a whisper. So, um, I feel like it's going to be more the whisper. I feel like there could be the whisper of something. You get what I'm saying, Libra, right? There's just a little, oh, by the way, you know, almost in passing, like it's just, and you're, and if you're not paying attention, that's my point, then it's going to pass you by. So it's up to you to pay attention and be on the alert for those little whispers of opportunity, those little intuitive nudges that you know, hint, whisper at you to go to a certain place, to talk to a certain person, etc. All right, Scorpio. Scorpio, all the eyes are on you. All of them. Scorpio, your full moon of the year. How are you feeling? We can often feel a little... I used to use that word tender. We can feel a little tender at our personal full moon. It's really a time to evaluate, I think, kind of our personal direction. Especially if the full moon is conjunct your your sun. Because sometimes, of course, full moons might be earlier than your than your sun degree. And when a full moon is on your sun you feel it of course much more so this full moon so people people born in the latter half of scorpio are probably going to feel this full moon a little bit more than if you're born early in scorpio all right what do my scorpios need to know about their week coming up what is going on Virgo just got the Blossom card. So we have Spread Your Wings. So we have the Two of Wands. I love this card so much. So beautiful. And we have the Judgment card, Blossom. And we have the Hierophant, Teach. So there is an opportunity for you, Scorpio, to uh, really learn a lesson about your own freedom. To learn a lesson about your own potential to learn a lesson, and again, I'm not saying in a bad way, uh, learn a lesson about really kind of what dreams are you going for right now? <laughs> because these cards, these uh, were both, like, look at these big, this is a big sun ball. This is so gorgeous, like the golden egg, the goose that laid the golden egg, I was saying to Virgo. And then we have this beautiful, this, like radiant sun that this person's moving towards so and look at all the light also in this card so to me this represents dreams really your dreams your goals your desires the things you want to manifest you're spreading your wings Scorpio you have emerged from a cocoon and you are wanting to blossom into your talents and there is a lesson to be learned about how great you are, I feel. Sometimes Scorpios do not realize how powerful they are. They are one of the most powerful signs in the Zodiac um, because of their determination and their intuition and their willpower. So sometimes like it's you know how it's like just something who you are so you don't like think twice about it you kind of take it for granted in a way and that's what i'm feeling i think you're going to realize that at this full moon in particular especially with that venus uranus conjunction opposite you in the seventh house that you're so much more than they said you were I think sometimes what happens to Scorpios is that other people try to dim their light, try to dim their power, because like I said, Scorpio is very powerful. And 
I think at this full moon in particular, you are seeing and feeling in this solar plexus, your will, like there is something very important to you, Scorpio, that you want to bring to fruition, that you want to have happen. And it involves you going out there, spreading your wings, perhaps leaving a relationship or embracing a new relationship that allows you the support to fly. Because that's another thing. Sometimes Scorpio's relationships end up being with people who want to keep them in chains because, again, they're afraid of Scorpio's power and they try to control Scorpio. And that's, you know, not going to happen. So you're you're realizing that you know there are so many things that you want to accomplish and that there is one in particular and you're going to see evidence of it at this full moon you're going to see evidence that you are on the right track you're going to see evidence that you're on your way the path is before you to go toward this dream and you are also possibly, not only is this, I feel like a lesson from the universe, but you're also possibly going to have an opportunity to take whatever this thing is that you want to create and, you know, this golden egg. And you're at some point, it could be five months from now, five weeks from now, could even be within the next five years with this five year. There's going to be an opportunity for you to be able to teach that to other people. So I think that that is beautiful. Okay, let's let's pull a card here. You're going to understand Scorpio that you can have freedom within a relationship. You're going to have freedom within a relationship. That just because you're in a relationship does not mean that you give up everything else. So like I said, either a new person's coming in to teach you that or you're going to realize that in the current relationship you're in and make adjustments. That's one possible aspect of that energy. But for others of you, it's really this personal goal, this personal project, this personal achievement you really want to have happen. And you're going to see the evidence of it happening at this full moon. I'm not saying it's all every single thing that you're wishing about it is going to come true overnight. I'm just saying that you're going to see the inklings of um, the fact that down the road, it's going to be even more successful. You're just, just starting. It's just starting that blossoming. You're just starting on that path of spreading your wings. But it's going to you know blossom if you believe. If you believe, it's going to blossom into this amazing golden egg. So that's your angel answer card. If you believe. Okay, I'm going to do a quick pause and take a sip of water. Okay, Sagges. Sagges. You've got that full moon in your 12th house of secrets, mysteries losses dreams imprisonment 12th house is quite an interesting house of withdrawal the unconscious all right let's see the emotional energy you're going to be dealing with what is going on for this next week from march 18th to, let's take that one's flying at me from march 18th to the 24th March, March, hello, May, <laughs> March. Oh my God, I just realized I said that. Okay, let's see what you have for May. <laughs> okay. So we have the throat chakra, throat chakra, and we have two major arcanas. We have the chariot card, which is showing up here as move. And we have the nurture, the empress. So this energy that you're going through at this full moon, because it's in your 12th house, It's really important for you not to get too caught up in 
your, in my opinion, in your, um, in your fears, in your head, in the, in the voices in your head that, that tell you, you know, all the bad things, all the fears, um, it would be a good time to talk, throat chakra, talk with someone who either a professional or a best friend, a counselor, you know, something like that. Talk with somebody who can um, just listen to you. I don't think they need to really give advice. I think you just need to unburden yourself. Be, and I'm feeling it's this idea that the energy needs to move. The energy needs to move out of your body, out of your head, out of your energy space, really. There is so much in your psychic baggage closet right now. <laughs> okay, Sagittarius, like it needs to be moved out. One way to move it out, like I said, is to speak about it. Just get it out. Another way to move it out is to um, purge it out through massage, through dance, through punching kicking my i love my body combat class um you know whatever the case may be dance i think i already said that just just get it out of your body singing even that can get it out you've got to get this energy out of your system this can even be writing it down i mean that's the movement of the pen right so it's this idea that you will be victorious because this is the chariot card this is a beautiful card you will be victorious in conquering your inner demons if you do those things because there are some and we all have these things we all have these voices we all have baggage this is not exclusive to Sagittarius it's just this is some of the energy you're dealing with right now please go watch the monthly that I just did okay there's there's you know there's a lot going on with you guys so gotta get it out the other thing is too is that there has been a feel for some of you, an aspect of your own creativity and nurturing and just peaceful time, I'm feeling. Relaxation and peaceful time where you can, because look at all the purple in this card, where you can, and indigo, where you can tap into your intuition, where you can have a conversation, throat chakra here, with yourself, <laughs> that there has not been enough private time for you to do that. And that, to me, is the energy that is speaking to you at this, oh my god, excuse me, at this full moon. See, I'm even, like, I'm trying to purge now, too. I am so aligned with your energy, <laughs> like having acid reflux, <laughs> trying to purge. So, that's what I was saying. You're, you haven't even had enough alone time to sit and relax into your own intuition and have a conversation with yourself about what you need to let go of what you need to move out of your body, out of your system. It's like it's that old expression, you got to get it out of your system. And and that's what you need to do with this full moon. It's it's the right energy for that. But it needs to be done in a nurturing, loving way that supports your journey, supports your healing. Um so whatever way that way works for you. I mean, some people think that I'm a little insane the way I go to body my body combat you know, punching and kicking four to five times a week. But how is that nurturing? Some people might say, and I say it's very nurturing because all that energy, whatever's going on, any stress, any drama, whatever it is, even just clearing my energy field, it all gets left on that gym floor because by the end of the class, you're just, you know, dripping with sweat and, <laughs> you know, all the toxins have left your body and it, it you're good. You're, and you're mentally clear. It's like it's amazing. If you haven't tried it, try that. It's it's a great it's a great workout and a great stress reliever. But that is nurturing for me. That's what works for me. So you have to find the thing that works for you, Sagittarius. That involves movement. You will be victorious, as I said with this chariot card. But it involves this movement. So physical exercise would be great for you as a form of nurturing yourself. If you can do it in nature, go spend some time on a walk in the park would be beautiful for you. Gardening would be great. That's a very physical activity. You see this woman in the garden here. But also if you can take a day or two or even a couple hours out just to, to, to give a talking to to yourself, you know, sometimes we need to do that. We need to have a conversation with ourselves and realize you know, what we focus on expands. 
where attention goes, energy flows. And I feel like the energy has been flowing in directions that are not helpful for you. So that's going to be illuminated at this full moon. You want to do something about that. All right. Let's see what is happening. You can ask a question. We'll pick a card. Okay. Okay, peaceful resolution. I feel that some of you are also kind of fighting with yourself. I think some of you are thinking... I should have been farther along. I should have done this. I should have done that. Uh, I shouldn't feel this way. Some of you may even be feel like there's there's this kind of internal war going on that um, is a battle with no victors. It just needs to be eliminated, the whole thing. It just needs to go out of your system, out of your body. You're creating a lot of conflict. There's, there's a lot of stuff that just, it just needs to go. You don't need it anymore. So there will be a peaceful resolution. I think you're going to stop. There's some element I'm feeling some of you are really fighting with yourselves over something. And uh, talking it out, especially with somebody, is going to go a long way as well toward healing that. Okay, let's look at my Capricorns. You have that full moon in your 11th house of hopes and wishes. Let's see what the energy is for you, Capricorn. Capricorn. Oh, that one definitely wants, two of them wanted to come out. All right, we need one more. And that one sticking in my hand. Okay. Gosh, this, this Wheel of Fortune coming out quite a bit today. Okay. So very interesting. We have the three of cups. We have sharing the love. Are you wearing your heart on your sleeve, Capricorn, at this full moon? And we have flow. We have that wheel of fortune. And then we have the nine of swords, darkest fears and moon cycle going on, going on here. So... I think some Capricorns are kind of going back and forth between trusting the universe and not trusting the universe. Okay, <laughs> to be quite frank, that's what I'm feeling. Because um, this is how the cards came out. So some of you are most of the time in this energy, feeling good. Well, I don't want to say some of you. I mean, I don't know. This is a general reading, right? But I think in general, Capricorns are vacillating between these two states of being from feeling like the universe is bringing them good stuff and that you're feeling like you can share of yourself the universe brings it back to you you know law of attraction all of that uh feeling good about life wearing your heart on your sleeve type thing emotionally open and then like oh hell no okay so like I like in the trenches with your darkest fears, like the universe does not have my back. The universe forgot about me. The universe doesn't care. I'm abandoned. I'm small. I'm lonely. Like I'm a mess, whatever, right? That's so you're going back and forth between these two feelings. And in the middle, in the middle of all of this is the wheel of fortune. The time is here, Capricorn. This new, uh, new moon, this full moon is in your 11th house of hopes and wishes and dreams and goals. As I was just saying to Sagittarius, I mean, do you want to focus your attention on the things you don't want or the things that you want? And that's what this is speaking to me. The choice needs to be made. Which direction? This looks like a compass here on this card. Which direction are you going to go in, Capricorn? Okay, which direction? I'm getting hot in here. Whoa, getting hot in here. Which direction are you going to go in? Are you going to go toward believing? Or are you going to be going toward doubt and giving in to your darkest, darkest fears? So that's the decision. That's what you're going to see come to illumination at this full moon. All right, hold on a second. 
Yeah, between um, the lights that I have on to make the videos and then just the energy starts running, I get overheated. So <laughs> I, I turn on the air conditioning. Okay, so this is, this is the crucial culminating point for you, Capricorn, um, with that full moon in your 11th house. It's, it's making a choice to commit to really positive thinking, positive um, belief in your ability to make your hopes and wishes and dreams come true, to shed light on your darkest fear so that they can be released and you don't keep giving too much attention to them. All right, let's pull an angel answer card for you. You're going to be moving in a new direction also, Capricorn, with a lot more people around you. There's going to be an opportunity to join um, a, new, a new group. And I think they're going to come to you. I think they're going to ask for your presence. I don't think you're necessarily going to be seeking them out, although you could be. I think they know of you and they invite you into the group. And it's going to be good for you. It's going to be good for you. Okay, let's pull a card. Yeah, I like that one. Okay, get more information. Get more information, Capricorn. I think more information is going to come to light at this full moon in regards to one of the goals that you're working on and it is going to um i think perhaps put a fear of yours to rest about the direction that you're moving that you're moving in so that's excellent okay all right let's now do uh, aquarius let's see what's going on for my aquarians you have your full moon in your 10th house of career Let's see what's happening for you guys. The emotions. What's going on? Oh, my goodness. Look what just flipped over. Can you see that? It is the lovers. The lovers. All right. We'll take it. It flipped over. It wants to come out, Aquarius. And, you know, your monthly reading was all about passion and prosperity. So, what was that last month? I don't know. Gosh, I do so many readings. Okay. Let's pull that one. No, I think it was this month. All right, let's see. What else? Yeah, I'm feeling this one. Okay. Throat chakra again. Emperor card. And look at this. Two major arcana and throat chakra. So there's something coming to light for you, even though this is in your career zone. Well, actually, I mean, we have that Venus-Uranus conjunction in your home life. So there could be, there could be a conversation that needs to be had about how much time you're spending on your career versus how much time you're spending in your relationship, if you have a relationship. Alternatively, if you don't have a relationship right now, you could be having this conversation with yourself, asking yourself, am I really just spending too much time in my work life, my career life, and not enough time developing a personal life and you may see evidence of that at the full moon um so for example it could be a friday night at six o'clock aquarius and you're still working <laughs> everybody else is out at, at the pub or you know watching their favorite tv show or getting together with friends or getting a bite to eat whatever and you're still working and there's nothing wrong with that it's just the idea of like the balance so some of you are are going to be seeing that and and looking at that very much at this full moon for others of you because it's in the 10th house there can be some amazing career opportunity because this is the lover's card i mean this is just a beautiful yes and yes energy card this is bounty this is love this is joy this is um sometimes having to choose between two things a decision that has to be made but but overall this is a very positive energy card and so is the emperor 
And this, of course, on this deck is lead. So there could be a promotion that you get at this time. There can be an up leveling in your business that is long overdue or that you've been working on for at least six months. And you are going to be like, oh my God, finally, 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 finally. And you're gonna wanna shout the news from the rooftops. <laughs> That's another possibility. You're not gonna be able to contain your joy at having this situation in your career finally manifest. So, fantastic. There could be some publicity coming to you as well for your career. But as I said, this is a general reading for others of you, it's that, that balance between work and personal life that is gonna be thrown into high relief, a spotlight on it. How are you doing with that? And you may need to make some adjustments but, um, you know, there's, there's amazing, amazing energy here for you, Aquarius. For some of you, you know, if you look at this card, this person has a scroll in his hand. You could be signing a contract. This can be a contract for a lease. This can be a contract for a new job. This can be a contract for... Um, some sort of starting a patent. I'm hearing a patent for some people. Um, you know, something like that. This could even be starting a new degree program for some people. You could have just gotten a new degree as well. So very, very beautiful energy. And you're not going to want to keep it contained. You want people to know. <laughs> like, hey, I worked long and hard at this. And finally, it's culminated. Either after four long years, like studying, or after six months of trying to get the situation grounded and you know get the new office, get the new job, get the new business space, etc., you're gonna want to shout it from the rooftops. All right, and let's see. You can ask a question. Let's see what else we need to know from this. Okay. The situation will improve. It's already improved, but it's gonna get even better. It's gonna get even better, Aquarius, particularly in regards to your career. Because the 10th house is being illuminated for you at this full moon. Situation will improve. Beautiful. Okay, and finally, my Pisces. Let's see what's going on for you, Pisces. That one. Take that one. And that one. Okay. All right, Pisces. My goodness, this throat chakra one keeps coming out. We have the death card, we have release, we have the throat chakra, and we have the moon card. So this full moon is happening in your ninth house of, um, of learning, higher education, writing, communicating, legal, possibly legal matters, um, truth, justice. I feel that there's some sort of, I'm just hearing, I, this may not be for everybody, but I'm hearing there's some sort of injustice that may come to light that you will either be defending somebody, defending yourself, or um, having to really release a situation that has not been treating you fairly. And I said this in my monthly in regards to Pisces that there was a lot of emphasis around your finances that came out in that monthly reading. So this could even be something about that where you're going to have to um, I'm really like confronting somebody maybe about the mishandling of your money or it, especially if you're in a partnership where your funds are intermingled, there may be some very serious conversation you're gonna have to have about the way your partner's been using the family finances, in particular your finances. For other Pisces, this is um, kind of I'm hearing like I've had enough moment particularly in regards to 
uh, surrender because the ninth house also rules spirituality so some of you are just in this mode of confronting yourself because there's a picture of another person here confronting yourself and releasing and surrendering to the universe so whatever you're going through Pisces you may just be like you know what I haven't been able to change this what if I just let go let God you know whatever you believe and just surrender and talk to myself, talk to some other people who can help me and just trust that this will be taken care of. So that's that's another possibility for some for some Pisces. For other Pisces in regards to a love relationship, the ninth house doesn't really rule that, but it's a full moon in Scorpio. So I know Scorpio is a lot about relationships because it rules the eighth house, especially sexual relationships. There could be one that gets released for you. Pisces there could be you you must let confront and release let somebody go from your life because I'm feeling that they're possibly misrepresented themselves here okay with this moon card they possibly um, had a secret they did not reveal alternatively if you've been hiding something Pisces from a partner that could get revealed they could confront you on it and tell you that they don't want to see you anymore because of it so uh, you know that's a possible there's it's a general reading so there's all possible combinations with that um but some of you are going to have an i can't take it anymore i've kind of reached the end of my line and the way i've been and what i'm saying is by the that the way i've been doing things hasn't been working therefore i need to release and surrender and confront myself the patterns of behavior, the patterns of thought that I've had, and I need to release them. Look for somebody who can talk to me, guide me, throat chakra, talk to me, guide me, counsel me, and lead me in the right direction and help me because I'm ready. I, what I've been doing isn't working. I'm done. So that's what I mean by that type of surrender. Okay, let's pull a card here see what we have for you you can think of a question we'll also see how the card relates to the reading Ooh, all right that one seems to it's like flying at me okay so there's a reconsider we got all the blue here lines with that throat chakra card that we just looked at so with this card coming up it also could be the idea that you need to reconsider and rethink what you're ready to let go of, I think, is another, is another thing. It may be a premature release, maybe, especially if it's of a person. It might be if this situation applies to you. Um, for some of you, this is the answer to some other, other question. Um, I would say, though... I feel the urge is there from these cards, from the moon card, which of course also relates to the full moon, and the the release card. There really is the need, the urge, the, the desire to just be done. That's what I'm feeling for you, Pisces. Tread carefully because, and I'm saying that because of this angel card. Really think it through, talk it through and make sure it's what you want to do, okay, um, before you do it. Because you may find that you regret or reconsider it immediately once you've done it. So just, just make the decision slowly and carefully. Because sometimes that's what happens at full moons. Like the energy so heightened that it's just, it's like all of a sudden it's done. And you haven't had a second to breathe and really figure it out. So just keep that in mind, Pisces. Okay, everybody, I hope that this was helpful for you. Please leave me a comment and let me know how the energy resonated. That's it for me for this week's Friday Feelings with Stella Wilde. Hope everybody has a great week. And check back in through the week because I've been posting a couple of videos a week. I've been doing some pick a cards. I've been doing some general readings and, uh, you know, various things. So check back and hit the bell so that you get notified of when I release new videos. All right, take care, everybody. I'll see you again soon.